Bamidbar 2517 brings to a conclusion two quite unfortunate events that took place while the Bnei Israel were in the Midbar, that of Balak with his attempt to curse the Bnei Israel using the powers of Bilam. This is followed by the Pinchas episode, the response of the nation's leadership to the first recorded attempt to look for life partners outside of one's tribe, nowadays called intermarriage, the technical term exonomy, in which Pinchas took the law into his own hands in order to avert, or at the very least, stall a plague that was ravaging the community. Subsequent to these two events, we are told that God commands Moshe to Tsaror et Hamidyanim. Tzadik Reish Reish as a Shoresh tends to incorporate a number of translations that involve confinement and a limitation on one's ability to express oneself. In this context, Moshe is told to cause the Midyanim distress, threaten them, harass them to the point of vihikitem otam, striking them down. In his commentary to the Pasuk, Rashi focuses upon the word tsaror and states kemo, just as with respect to Shmot 20, the word zachor, and the word shamor in Dvarim, these are the two versions of the Aseret brought. so too the word tsaror is Lashan hoveh, is not a command, but rather a pa'ol word, Rashi uses the term present tense, an act that was to be ongoing, and then provides an interpretation, Aleichim la'ayev otam, that it is incumbent upon you to treat them as enemies, la'ayev, the verb form of oyev, an enemy, but not as an isolated one-time event, but rather one that was to continue for all time. Were this to be an isolated act of hostility towards the Midianites, then, argues Rashi, the instructions should have been in the form of a command, rather than tsaror, ongoing, it should have been tsaror with a shva. Which brings us to question 2, regarding Rashi's commentary to Devarim 31, to the word lakoach, that rather than merely stating that the word lakoach is kemo, zachor, shamor, and haloch, at the very least, Rashi should have included, as he does in his commentary to Bamidbar 25.17, referencing two of the three examples that he brings in Devarim, adds a definition, Lashon Hover, so that while question one focuses upon the lack of any clarification, explanation for the link, question two maintains that at the very least, Rashi should have provided a definition Lashon Haver, as he does in his commentary to the Tsaror of the Midbar 25. At this point in time, we now have, in addition to his commentary to the word Lakoach, two earlier commentaries, one to the word Zachor in Sefer Shmot, the other to the Tsaror in Sefer Bamidbar. With the introduction of Rashi's commentary to the Tsaror, we can address the point raised in the footnote in which it was asked that possibly the lack of information, the brevity of his commentary to Devarim Lakoach comes on account of the fact that this would have been information that had been presented earlier in Sefer Shmot to the word Zachor. To this comes the response that this line of thinking is not tenable because if that were the case, there would have been no need for Rashi in his commentary to the Bamidbar Tsaror to firstly provide a definition followed by an explanation to the command of Tsaror et Hamidyanim. In the words of the footnote, Gamba Pasha Pinchas, that is Bamidbar 25, Pirush Rashi writes in his commentary to the word Tsaror, Kemo Zachor Veshamor, and nevertheless, although it is a repeat of the commentary in Shemot, he adds, Lashon Hoveh Aleichem La'ayev Otam. And hence, the original questions 1 and 2 remain active. Why is it that in his commentary to Devarim 31, where he writes, Kamo Zachor Shamor Haloch, there is no interpretation, or at the very least, a definition explaining the link between these three references to the word Lakawach.